quickly before this video starts, guys, all of my editing presets and plugins are 30% off this weekend until Monday the 13th. So if you're interested, we don't do sales very often. If you want to pick anything up at a deal price, the link is at the top of the description. Knowing how to create high quality short form content has become increasingly more important for video editors. Now there's no magic trick to make your video go viral, but there are some easy principles that I can teach you that can help you create the best possible video content. So today I'm going to teach you three things that utilize these principles. The first is going to be Ali Abdal's collage transition explainer editing style. The second is going to be turning still images into animated parallax animations using this easy new workflow that you definitely should know. And then the third is going to be all about creating animated text animations. So if you guys do enjoy, subscribe, like, comment, do all that good stuff. So with that said, let's hop in and get started. All right, guys, so here we are in After Effects. And first things first, of course, we need to set up our composition for our shorts. I already went ahead and did that. You just need to click here and create a new composition. And for our aspect ratio, you need to flip it. So if you're normally working in 1920 by 1080, 16 by nine compositions, just flip that. So we're gonna go 1080 by 1920 to get that vertical ratio. So now that you've done that, we need to, of course, drag in our footage. So you can see the main issue here is everything is very cramped. If I wanted to do some infographics or talk about things or even just put text on the screen with this vertical format, there's just not a lot of space. So what I'm about to teach you is a great way to transition, to give yourself extra room in the composition, to show different images, show different text, so we're going to create a little paper rip transition where this swivels down and we have some other collage elements or infographics at the top. Now there's actually this free clip that I found on footagecrate.com. It's called cloth ripping one, and this is going to be great for us. So I'll go ahead and leave a link down below if you want to pick that up. So we'll just drag in our clip and here's what it looks like black and white. Now this is ripping from the center. I don't really want that to happen. I want it to sort of rip across. So I'm just going to grab this clip and sort of stretch it out. And then as you see, now we have this sort of sideways tear. If you want, you can even flip this. So now let's move around these clips and create some actual transitions so that we can give ourselves some more room to work with. So what I'm going to do is select my normal clip right here. I'm going to click on the arrow down here and just open up the transform options. I'm going to scroll to where I want the transition to happen, where it kind of shifts everything down. So right about here. So this is going to be our transition start. I can go ahead and just click and drag down to activate the keyframes for all of our transition options. And then I can drag a little bit and I can just grab the second value under position. This is the Y value. So this is what moves it up and down. So I'll just crank this to the right so that it sort of just shifts down a little bit. So now we've created a little keyframe animation where our clip moves down and you can change the speed of that by either making this longer so it'll be more slow or you can bring the keyframe in to make that more fast. Now to make this transition look a bit more smooth, I'm just gonna go ahead and click toggle switches and modes down here. And now I can activate the motion blur switch for this clip. So with that enabled, we're gonna get a much more natural looking transformation where you can see all this blur and here's the difference. So now let's turn back on the visibility of our paper rip clip and let's try and match the timing up of these a bit better. So we want this to rip and then swivel down. So what I'm gonna do is right click on my paper rip clip and I'm gonna go up to time and I'm going to click enable time remapping. So I'm going to find the spots where the paper rip starts and where the paper rip ends. And I'm just going to click under time remapping to set a little keyframe at those points. So here's the beginning. We'll click to set a keyframe. Here's the end. We'll click to lock in that keyframe. So now what I can do is position these two keyframes right over top of our pull down transition. So it should start right before our clip pulls down and it should end just like that. So now let's show back our footage. Something like this. And of course, if you need to, you can change around the timing. If you want it to be faster, you can pull this in. So now that we have all the timing correct, what we're going to do is actually set up a little alpha mat. So we want to tear away this clip in the shape of our paper rip. And to do that, it's a lot easier than it sounds. We just need to again go over to toggle switches and modes and you're going to see this little track mat drop down. You can use the drop, you can use the drop down or even easier. You can just use this little pick whip next to track mat and just connect our footage to our paper rip transition clip. So now, as you can see, our footage is only in the shape of the paper rip. We want to do the inverse of that. So it's cutting away. So we're just going to go over here to these little boxes and we're going to click to invert the mat. So now we are cutting away from the footage. This is transparent underneath, which is nice. We can put anything in here that we want. I'm just going to add one more little step here, and that's just to clean up this fine edge. I'm going to make it look a bit more paper rip like just by selecting the paper rip clip going and grabbing my pen tool in the top left. And I'm just going to sort of create this jagged edge with the mask. 
and then I'm going to click M and we'll just change that from add to subtract. So we're cutting away what's in this mask. And of course that is optional, but I think it's just a nicer little touch. So that looks great. An easy little paper rip transition. Again, everything here is transparent. So all we need to do at this point is drag in anything that we want to show underneath these clips. So you can find any textures or background images for free on the internet. I have a giant mixed media bundle on my website with collages, video animations, still animations, where it's just the actual paper images that you guys can use. There's hundreds of these. And again, if you want them already animated for you, we'll go to paper under animation. And these are all loopable video animation clips. So I can just drag this into my comp. And again, these are easy to make for free. The mixed media bundle just saves you a bit of time. So I'm just going to click control D and loop all of these clips together so that it'll extend throughout our entire composition. Once I've done that, I can hold down shift and select all the paper, right click and pre compose these together. And I'll name this paper background. And then I'll just click V to select my pointer and I'll position this paper where I want. And of course, make sure that the paper is at the bottom of the stack. You don't want it on top. You want it to be at the very bottom so we can get that sort of ripped paper texture. So now we have the ripped paper transition. If you want to change the timing of these video animations, for me, I already have it animated. So I'm just going to add a little posterized time effect and I'll put that down to six for the frame rate. And now it should just be a lot more smooth and slowed down. So that is the core essentials I'm trying to show you here. Everything else I'm going to show you with this technique is going to be optional. The main thing I'm trying to teach you is just adding those little keyframes to extend using little alpha mats or transitions or backgrounds just to give yourself some more room in the comp. From here, you can repeat any of those steps. So for example, maybe you want to go from full talking to split screen like this to just fully infographic. If you want to do that, we can select our footage again. Whenever we want it transitioning out, we can click control shift D just to make a little cut. And then we can open up the transform and just add some keyframes at this position to make it go away. So we'll take the position, put it all the way down like this. And then you can just take your paper and just readjust to account for that gap. So slides down, slides out, and you can do that with anything. Another side tip here, you can select the clip. You can click on this little graph editor button. Here's the keyframes that we made. If you want, you can right click on these, go to keyframe assistant and easy ease. You'll see these will automatically create these soft ramps for you. So that'll smooth out the motion or you can use the graph editor to create any custom speed so that you get these nice clean ramps. So we'll click out of the graph editor. And again, last optional thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to show using some of my paid packs and I have a full tutorial showing you how to make all of these from scratch for free. If you're interested, this pack is full of paper rips, paper shreds. We have a collage pack all built into Mogurt files. So you can use these in Adobe Premiere and After Effects. You can do that easily just by going to file, open project and After Effects. Here's where I have those Mogurt saved from my paid pack. And from here, I can just drag in the composition from my Mogurt. So the Mogurts are great. It just allows me to create some cool little effects just by dragging and dropping. I recommend even if you're doing things from scratch, you save the Mogurt so that you can reuse that certain thing. And with Mogurts as well, everything's customizable. So I can click open here to essential properties. You're going to see this replace media and change inside paper texture. I can load in custom paper textures. I can disable the paper texture and I can even replace the media that's inside there with something like from my collage pack. We'll go to sci-fi, we'll drag in this astronaut image, and we can just drag it over the replace media. So very quick and easy. What I'm going to do is just click control shift D to split this here. I'm going to time and freeze frame this little end part, and we'll just drag it out so that this little image will stay forever after it's revealed by the paper. And if you want to give it a little bit more life, you can also click P on this layer and then hold down alt and click on this little position slider. So hold alt click here. That'll open up your expression editor. I can type in something like wiggle five comma five. And that'll just give it this sort of slight wiggle movement. So from here, you can just rinse and repeat those steps, bringing in other assets, transitioning between your scenes using those techniques that I showed you right here. I'm dragging in some ransom letters from my collage pack. Yeah, the wiggle expression is great in this sense. I can just go in and add a little bit of wiggle to all of these letters and it works perfectly with this sort of collage handmade look. 
All right, guys, so editing trick number two, I'm going to show you some parallax effects and you don't have to only create parallax with this. I know this has been shown a lot before in other tutorials. I mainly want to show you this new workflow through the Adobe generative fill feature that just came into the stable branch of Photoshop. It's extremely easy to create parallax with Photoshop using this new generative fill as well as with After Effects. So I have this image here and with Photoshop, it's so easy just to click select subject. I'm going to add to the selection. What I want to do is cut Spider-Man out of this image so that I can isolate him from the background. So once I have this rough selection around him, I can just click generative fill. And if you leave it blank and just click generate here, it's just going to remove him and fill in all the parts in the background. So this is great. Uh, we obviously have some weird results here. I can just go in and reselect this spot, regenerative fill that. But essentially, this is an amazing tool for creating these clean plate backgrounds, not only for creating the parallax that I'm going to show you, but also for other effects where you can isolate the subject from the background to do some really cool things. So now we have our clean plate. I'm just going to file export and bring this back into After Effects. So let's first actually just drag in the normal image in After Effects and just sort of frame it up. So I'll scale it like this. And then what I'm going to do is click Control D to duplicate this image. And then we can bring in our clean plate that we just saved from After Effects. So we have Spider-Man removed. We'll drag that into the project bin. And then a little trick here, what you can do is click this bottom layer. And while holding down Alt on your keyboard, you can drag the clean plate over top of here and it's going to actually replace this. So now we can just click the visibility and we can essentially just see through this image. So let's show you how to create a parallax from here. And again, once you have this set up using this workflow, there's so many different things you can do with photo or video, extremely, extremely useful. So I'm just gonna quickly grab my pen tool and you can do this in Photoshop too if you want, but I'm just going to mask Spider-Man out from this image. And then once we connect the masks together, and we hide the background, you see we have this completely isolated and we have the background completely isolated as well. Once you have both of these layers isolated, we can actually create a little animation here to bring some 3D depth to this image. So what I'm gonna do is with both of these layers, you wanna click toggle switches and modes to show your layer switches here. And I'm going to enable the 3D layer switch for both of those. Once I've done that, I can right click in this gray space and just go over to new and we're gonna create a camera. So we'll click okay. And then we can open up the transform options for that camera. And at the beginning of the timeline here, I'm just going to activate all these keyframes. We'll drag to the very end or however long you want this animation to be. And then from here, you can just click C on your keyboard and that's going to toggle the camera control. So if I click C again, you see we now have a pan. If I click it again, we have a zoom. So you can use these camera controls just to create any little movement you want. Everything's already keyframed, so anything you do here will be animated. So we created that animation of just a simple little zoom. So now that we have the zooming, now that we have the 3D layers, what we need to do is just add a little bit of that parallax. And to do that, we can go back over to our layers. And if we open them up and open up transform, you're going to see this third value here. This is your X. Y and Z axis. So this third axis will move the image back in 3D space. It looks like it's scaling, but if we change to like a side, you see now you'll see if I scale, it's staying the same. But if I change Z axis, it's actually moving back and forth. So let's go over to position and keyframe it and we'll do the same we did with the camera. We'll go all the way back and we'll create a keyframe where it's just sort of moving back the background on Z space. There's what that looks like. And we can do the same with the foreground and that's going to create that sort of parallax look. So let's go over to the foreground image of Spider-Man, transform, keyframe your position at the beginning, drag all the way over to the end. And then we can just take that third Z axis and sort of bump that up. So now you're creating a parallax look. And if you want, you can even come up here to camera, go down to camera options. And in camera options, you can check on depth of field and you can mess around with this aperture and focal distance if you'd like to control the blurring of the background like you would a normal camera. So again, a great way to really make images pop if you're doing some sort of voiceover. If you want to take this even further, you can even select the Spider-Man layer here at the top. We can go over and grab the puppet tool in the top left and we can just place some of these pins over top of Spider-Man just to give them some basic little animation. 
So the pins work just like keyframes. We'll just go over, we'll just go over to effects on that layer. Now you're going to see puppet. And here's all the points that we just created. So we'll drag a bit, move around these puppets. Now we have this animated still image. So really cool stuff. Again, when it comes to shorts, if you're storytelling, if you just have images as reference, these are some really simple things you can do just to take your production value to a whole nother level. Now, the last thing I want to talk about here is creating captions and text within After Effects for your voiceovers, for your shorts. This is a huge part of shorts. I think there's data that supports that shorts with animated titles and captions perform better. Now there are some new AI apps that you can pay monthly for and they'll automate captions over your video. This isn't an ad. This is just personally what I've used in the past. Very easy to use. The only issue is you have limited options for actually animating these, but it is a nice time saver. That one I just showed there was video AI. If you want to do this in After Effects, we can click the text tool to create a new text layer. Now a neat little trick in After Effects with the text layer selected, we can go over to layer. We can go down to layer styles. And these are similar layer styles that you see in Photoshop. So you can add stroke, you can add a drop shadow glow. So let's add a drop shadow to this. They're gonna pop down in this little bar here. We can raise up the size like this. If you wanna really make this pop, you can add other effects like glow, for example. I'll just add the simple built-in glow. Next, you can go to effects and presets and search for fade up words. You can also do this with fade up characters, and that'll give you this easy little text effect under animator right here. This will allow you to have an animatable keyframe to bring those words one after the other that you guys can control. So if you want them to come in fast, go like this. If you have your voiceover straight in After Effects, just drag in your audio voiceover file. You also have the freedom of adding any other effect transitions. So for example, if you don't want any of the text animations through here, you can go in and just add custom ones. So I can click S for scale. I'm just gonna place my anchor point in the center and put this at zero. Keyframe it, move a few frames, put this up to like 120, and then back down to 100. So you get this pop in and out. And then with After Effects, you could use the graph editor right here to smooth out these keyframes and make them look a lot better. Keyframe assistant, easy ease, to create this sort of velocity and bounce. Once you've done that, click Control Shift D. Again, write in your new text. You can open up the text you just animated, click on transform and click Control C on your keyboard, and then do the same on the next text layer here. Open up transform and then click Control V. It's going to copy and paste these keyframes. They should already be there. So if you want to, if you don't want to copy and paste them, you can just move them over like that. That way you're going to have this quick and easy little pop effect. So yeah, there's tons of easy ways you can do this with After Effects, fully customizable. I think it's actually easier to use After Effects than Adobe Premiere. Um, and I'm one to mainly use Adobe Premiere for things like this. But After Effects just makes it really, really easy. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you guys in the next one.